The update provides an analysis of the key differences between the Commissions of Inquiry Act 1888 and the new Act which received royal assent yesterday and how they'll impact the inquiry. Previously, the chairman had a broad discretion to control the proceedings, such as whether hearings should be held in public or in private. Witnesses could not refuse to answer questions, although their replies could not be admitted as evidence against them in civil or criminal proceedings. Anyone refusing to answer could be certified by the chairman to the Supreme Court. However, under the new law, a restriction notice can be served by the government. This serves to either restrict public attendance or restrict the inquiry from disclosing or publishing any evidence or documents. Furthermore, under Section 22, the inquiry now cannot require a person to give evidence or disclosure which could not be required by civil court. This changes the position on self-incrimination from the 1888 Act. Proceedings can only be instituted for offences in the context of the inquiry, for example if a witness refuses to answer a question, but now it can only be referred to the Supreme Court with the consent of the Attorney General. The inquiry team says it will need to amend its protocol for receipt and handling of documents, redaction and records management, as well as its protocol on the live streaming of the inquiry. The Act does not, however, impact the Chairman's intention to live-stream the inquiry on GBC and radio. The fact sheet says the main hearing is due to commence on the 8th of April and the inquiry continues to proceed on the basis of that start date. At present, it says it's not aware of any reason why that start date should not be kept.